Forlabs Vitran fusion splicers and glass processors such as the FFS2000 Fiber Workstation, LFS Large Fiber Splicer and GPX Glass Processor have a precision controlled filament based heat source that can be used for reliable and repeatable splicing and fabrication of fiber optical components. This video will discuss the splicing of polarization maintaining or PM fiber using these types of unit. Once a robust splice method has been established, fully automated PM splicing can be carried out with the press of a single button. First, we will discuss some of the properties of PM fibers, as well as the parameters needed to splice them using these types of unit. Then we will demonstrate how a PM splice is carried out using an FFS2000 workstation. In addition to the usual core, cladding and protective outer coating found in optical fibers, Polarization maintaining fiber contains extra structure that applies stress to the core. Popular types of PM fiber are panda and bow tie, so called because of the shape of the stress rods either side of the core. However, other geometries also exist, such as elliptical core. The extra structure causes stress induced by refringence, which creates two principal transmission axes at 90 degrees to one another a fast axis and a slow axis. Linearly polarized light launched into the fiber that is aligned to one of these axes will maintain its polarization direction while it propagates along the fiber, even if the fiber experiences external deformation. Polarized light will not maintain its polarization direction as it travels along non-PM fiber. To preserve the polarization along a spliced PM fiber, it is important to not only align the cores of the fibers, but also to rotationally align the stress rods in the fibers too. Once fully aligned, heat can then be applied to produce a low loss splice with a high polarization extinction ratio. Splicing two PM fibers together is very similar to splicing non-PM fibers. Many of the alignment steps are exactly the same, with only a few extra rotational processes required for PM fibers. Understanding how non-PM fibers are spliced together using these units is extremely helpful before learning about the additional steps required for the PM splice. If you have not watched the videos on standard fiber splicing, click on the annotations and view these first. Prepare two stripped, cleaned and cleaved fibers and load them into the unit. When carrying out a PM splice, the fibers will be viewed in end view and rotated by rotating the fiber holding blocks to align the stress rods. If the dimensions and positions of the features within the fiber are not already known, these can be determined by using the measurement guide in the FFS3 software. To select the method for PM alignment, select PM alignment configuration in the splice menu in the software. To customize the alignment for the type of PM fiber being used, enter the diameter of the cladding. A number of alignment approaches are available, which can be selected using the drop down menu. However, for most types of PM splicing, the symmetry approach should be selected, as this gives the fastest and most robust PM alignment. Even though the graphic shows bow tie fiber, the symmetry approach works for all types of stress rod configuration and many other structured fiber geometries, such as photonic crystal. Follow the instructions in the pop-up to calculate and input the values of the parameters P1 and P2. If the left and right fibers are the same, check the same box to only enter the parameters once. If dissimilar fibers are being used, then enter the parameters for each separately. If the diagnostics box is checked, a pop-up window showing the end result of the rotational alignment will be displayed once the process has been completed. Once the PM alignment parameters have been entered, the fibers can be aligned and spliced. First, the fibers are aligned spatially in the side views. Next, they are rotationally aligned in the left and right end views. Then the fibers are gapped and realigned in the side views. Once fully aligned, heat can be applied to the fibers to perform the splice. As with a non-PM splice, first, in front view, focus the right fiber and align it to the left. Then, in back view, focus the left fiber. 
and align it to the right fibre. Now the fibres will be aligned rotationally. Select the left end view. It is good practice to approach end view from a consistent fibre position. Ensure that for both end views the fibre is in focus and exposed correctly before aligning. Note that the same button on the main toolbar is used for both the end view and side view alignment. If the diagnostics box was checked, a pop-up window showing the result will be displayed. A successful alignment will rotate the fibre so that the stress rods are horizontal in the on-screen image. If the alignment completes as expected, close the dialog box and select the right end view and ensure the image is clear. Rotationally align the fibre. If the alignment has completed as expected, close the dialog box and return to the back side view. The fibres now need to be gapped and realigned in the side views to correct for any misalignment caused during the rotation. Focus, gap, and align. Now, in front view, focus, and align. Return to the back view and do a final realignment. The fibres are now aligned both spatially and rotationally and are ready to be spliced. The parameters for the splice can be displayed by selecting Splice Properties in the Splice menu. To perform the splice, click the Splice Only button on the main toolbar. Once the splice has been completed, it can be viewed in the side views. The rotational alignment of the fibres means that the fibre holding blocks are rotated. Performing the reset rotation motors process will return the fibre holding block rotation to zero and will enable the fibre holding block lids to be opened and the fibre removed. There are subtle differences in the way that PM splicing is carried out on the FFS2000, LFS and GPX units, but the basic principles of PM splicing are the same. The key difference is that the FFS2000 workstation can only splice fibres with cladding diameters up to 200 microns, whereas the LFS and GPX can process diameters up to 1250 or 1700 microns. Once a reliable and repeatable PM splice has been developed using the approach shown here, the blue button can then be used to execute a one-button PM splice process where all the steps are fully automated. If you have any questions or concerns, please email us either at techsupport@thorlabs.com or vitran.uk@thorlabs.com.